We have lots of Tesla stock news today, let's go through everything. Elon Musk just dropped a massive bombshell. He responded to this post from James, 80% of Americans surveyed were unaware how affordable Teslas are today. Lower prices cannot motivate buyers who falsely believe they can't afford to buy the product. Earlier, Elon Musk said that we will try a little advertising, but now Elon is saying something entirely different. This is no longer going to be little, I said we would advertise we are doing so at small scale and will do so at larger scale as we figure what works best. This is a pivotal moment in Tesla's history because Elon Musk has never before committed to advertising at large scale. While some reactions are a bit mixed, Overall, most people are responding to this positively. But if you really want to nitpick exactly what Elon said, he said, we will do so at larger scale. He didn't say large scale, there's a difference. But it appears to me that Elon is prepared to advertise at relatively large scale if the advertising campaigns work. So we just saw SpaceX advertising this Starlink product on Instagram. I advertised on Instagram before and these ads work pretty well. Here are all of the places where Tesla is already advertising. Google search ads, they are running about 300 ads. Airports, no sound video based wall ads with QR codes. We saw them in Japan. I haven't seen them anywhere else other than Japan. Then magazines, old school print style ads. You want to use things that you cannot track at all as your last resort unless they are severely underpriced. The airport idea I don't mind because it's only in Japan and Tesla sells so few vehicles in Japan that if the campaign actually works it will be ridiculously obvious. But tracking the success from a magazine ad is a lot more difficult. Doing an Instagram, YouTube ad, or a Facebook ad is so easy because you can track exactly what happened from each ad. It should be the priority to do ads that Tesla can actually easily track. So we're just asking everyone, where do you think Tesla should advertise at larger scale? Well, YouTube actually has a lot of advertising slots and you can make your ads fairly long form, but the ads have to be interesting and the ads have to hook people's attention. Otherwise they will just get the ad. I have used YouTube ads by the way, and these were incredibly effective, much better than Instagram actually because you can make the ad longer and as long as you can hold people's attention you will have a much better return but the thing is with Tesla's you can either advertise the price in that case you can just have an image and here's the price and yeah we have the best-selling car because it's the best car you can do that but that still does not answer a lot of concerns that people have people are concerned about charging how easy is it to charge people don't know many of them that you can just charge your vehicle at home without installing really anything you just plug the car in your outlet then here you go you're good you cannot really explain that in an image at least not in a way that will be very convincing so i think what would be really effective to do at first is crush all of the myths about tesla overall and you do that in content that is long form for example tv shows where the characters within the show actually explain and show the features of tesla and address all of the myths or big YouTubers that do 10, 20 minute videos and you can pay them to talk about Tesla for three to four minutes, make it interesting, make it funny or make it engaging and address each issue in a long form where these issues are actually addressed from people that the audience trusts. One of the biggest lessons that I have learned advertising is that your advertisement needs to be incredibly good and engaging. If it's not, you will just waste a lot of money advertising. And even if you don't waste a lot of money, it will actually be so much more effective overall, especially if your budget is incredibly big. So what Tesla could do is find big YouTubers, for example, Mr. Beast would be the most obvious choice and have them talk about Tesla. And they are the absolute best at creating engaging content and then make it so that Tesla could use the clips from these videos that all these creators make uh, and turn these into paid ads. For example, if Tesla does YouTube ads, it can target every single viewer of specifically Mr. Beast YouTube channel and Tesla could use literally videos made by Mr. Beast about Tesla and you can actually set it up so that as long as you watched 
Mr. Beast before and then you go to any other YouTube video, you will still see that ad. And because these people already trust Mr. Beast, the results would be better. Gary says that it is awesome that Tesla is starting to advertise and he says he will shut up now. <laughs> My personal take about all of this is that advertising of course works. I generated millions from advertising and I wanted Tesla to cut prices to a point there it really hurts competition and then we can start advertising. So that's pretty much what Tesla is actually going to do. I believe there are more price cuts to come but when eventually Tesla figures out how to do advertising and if Tesla does it on a large scale, I would expect for the backlog to come back and likely for prices to even go up. Tesla said in a regulatory filing it has received the request for information including subpoenas from the Department of Justice. These have included requests for documents related to Tesla's autopilot and full cell driving features and other requests associated with personal benefits, related parties, vehicle range and personnel decisions. So investigations continue. Some investigations have been clearly politically motivated and appear right after Elon's involvement with Twitter slash X, but nothing has come out of any of these. So to me, this is all just noise. Tesla also said that to our knowledge, no government agency in any ongoing investigation has concluded that any wrongdoing occurred. We cannot predict the outcome or impact of any ongoing matter. Should the government decide to pursue an enforcement action, there exists the possibility of a material adverse impact on our business results of operation, prospects, cash flows, financial position or brand. But I'd like to emphasize one more time that no wrongdoing occurred. If Tesla actually did something wrong, by now we would have known. There would have been something already. The fact that after a whole year of investigations, there has been nothing only goes to show you that a lot of these are strongly politically motivated. It just so coincided that some of these investigations started exactly when Elon started looking into purchasing Twitter and then eventually acquired Twitter. They just want to slow down Tesla and they want Elon to pay because they don't want Elon commenting about politics. They want Elon to just sit back quietly and not do anything. Elon of course has never done that and he will never do it and he will continue saying what he actually wants to say. And then of course there are some repercussions and we are seeing that here but nothing has actually materialized in any wrongdoing found. There of course has been a lot of slander against Elon and Tesla as a result of that as well but overall Elon's genius is worth all of this headache. Without Elon Tesla would not be nowhere near as innovative as it is right now. Tesla says its capital expenditure for 2023 would exceed the seven to nine billion dollar target it had laid out earlier this year as it ramps up output at its factories and gears up to roll of new models. The company's spending is, however, expected to return to the seven to nine billion dollar range in the next two years, a regulatory filing showed. I'm actually quite happy about this because I want Tesla to spend as much as it possibly can on expansion and we know when Tesla spends money on expansion, it is spent extremely well. Another reason for this acceleration, I think, is Elon is spending more time at Tesla compared to a year ago, and therefore he's pushing the team to do more. Tesla only spends money when it really has to and every dollar it counts. So this to me is good news. Refresh Model 3 deliveries are starting in multiple countries in Europe. This one is in Netherlands and yesterday we saw this in Germany as well. So far everything is going according to the plan. Deliveries also are now starting in Dubai. The first one should be delivered tomorrow. We have a report from the Highway Laws Data Institute that reveals the lowest whole vehicle theft claim frequency and you can see that the Model 3 is the least stolen vehicle in all of the US and the Model Y is number two. All other vehicles, relatively speaking, are stolen a lot more often, at least twice as often. Here's some good news. The local government where Tesla built its factory in Germany says that Tesla's water consumption at Giga Berlin fell in its first full year of production and has remained steadily beneath the approved limits since. There has been a lot of concern from the local protesters 
about Tesla's water usage. This will help fight all of these claims and all of these protesters. So it's good news. Elon Musk has been spotted having some fun. He just attended this F1 race in Austin. Of course, when Elon Musk came, he pulled up in a cyber truck. Seems like it did attract a crowd. But anywhere Elon goes, yeah, there's gonna be a crowd. Actually, there was a huge crowd. Look at all of these people and the interior of the Saba truck looks pretty cool to me. And Elon is having a hard time getting out. You can't see what's behind the camera, but there are, I believe, a lot more people as well. So Elon can't really go back either easily. And he just chose to go forward. The rear steering is definitely helping here. And uh, people are slowly moving out of the way. I would definitely not want to be like Elon here. I mean, you, you don't have any privacy people just around you. They love you, but you can't even get out of there easily. The UAW head says that the union has cards left to play as Detroit 3 negotiations continue. And they mean what they say. The UAW on Monday ordered 6,800 UAW workers to strike at Stellantis' largest assembly plant, halting output of the automaker's very profitable Ram 1500 pickup truck. More than 40,000 UAW workers are now on strike, accelerating the demise of these automakers and inevitably forcing them to fire and lay off many of the workers in the future. And I say, go for it. These companies, especially GM, are so ridiculously incompetent that it is astonishing and stunning that the company is still around with such terribly bad leadership. The downside though is many of these people will lose their jobs, but at least the people that will keep their jobs will make some more money in the meantime. Assuming that Tesla's employees do not unionize, this strike is really helping Tesla. Fisker has cut prices up to 11% of its high-end Ocean Extreme SUV on Monday while raising prices on two lower price variants. The company also is extremely close to its second bankruptcy. Most people think that Volkswagen will be the next company to adopt Tesla's charging standard, but you never really know. I mean, they have been... Uh, they fired the guy that really wanted to transition the company to EV, so don't underestimate their stupidity. At this point, any company that has not announced that they will work with Tesla and use Tesla's charging standards is just shooting themselves in the foot. It shows bad leadership, incompetence, stubbornness, and just pure stupidity. And at best, if a company still has not announced that they will use Tesla's charging standards, it just shows how slow they are to do anything really important, which goes back to basically them proving that they are incompetent. Because you are losing many sales by not working with Tesla here. Everyone else already decided that this is the way. So if you are not going with them, you are just creating unnecessary trouble for yourself. Uh, this is a good one. Toyota imagines the futuristic Land Cruiser EV. It won't sell you. Toyota has so many EV concepts at this point that it's difficult to keep track of just what the brand's latest vision for electrification is. This is a bit of a historical moment, a special time in history. Volkswagen will stop selling gas, diesel, and even hybrid cars in Norway at the beginning of next year. Make no mistake though, this is not voluntary. This is government forcing basically all automakers to stop selling gas-powered vehicles. Lucid just turned to a new demand lever and owner referral program. These are not massive discounts, but the problem is I know of one person who does not like Tesla and bought a Lucid. And because of all of the ridiculously strange software issues with Lucid, that person hates the car. So that person is actually not only not going to not recommend you a Lucid, he will tell you, do not ever buy a Lucid. Generally speaking, the more Teslas Tesla sells, the more Teslas Tesla sells. But it's almost like the more Lucids Lucid sells, the less Lucids Lucid sells. You can clearly see their production going down. And this is despite 
Lucid actually spending a lot of money on advertising. They need to fix their software. BYD website crashes as 50,000 customers check out newly launched electric seal. It doesn't say anything about sales. It just says that 50,000 visitors use the configurator. But we all know that the seal cannot compete with the Model 3 because the sales were up last year in December and they have never recovered after that, except when Tesla stopped selling the Model 3. Hyundai slashes EV lease prices on the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 following Tesla. So it's not just Tesla cutting prices. They cut lease prices by $50 a month and lease deals now start at around $229 per month. So yes, the price does matter. I have seen some reviews about this Hyundai vehicle and the reviews were all right, actually. It is not as good as Tesla, but if you don't mind the brand, that's an option for you. Stellantis, parent company of Fiat, Ram, and Peugeot, announced its plans to overtake Ford as the global number one seller of pickup trucks and vans within the next four years, and is hoping electrification will take it there. We heard some big promises from GM and from Ford earlier, only for these companies to go back on their promises and backtrack I would expect nothing less from Stellantis as well. A study found that an average new gas-powered vehicle today pollutes more than a vehicle from 2013. That's because heavy luxury SUVs are more popular. With Tesla saying that it will expand its expenditures, we are seeing more people now saying that, oh, maybe we should not do buybacks. If the stock drops a lot lower, it may make sense to do a buyback. But we know that Elon is the biggest shareholder of Tesla, basically, and he's not pro buyback, even though that would supposedly benefit him the most. So when a company insider does not want to do a buyback, I think that says a lot. Elon knows the best exactly how much Tesla is going to spend money in the future because it depends on his plans, basically. So I will not push for buybacks unless Elon actually wants to do buybacks. And the people that were strongly for buybacks, they did not anticipate that Tesla would spend more on capital expenditures. I like when SpaceX does well because that means Elon does not really need to spend as much time over there and he can spend more time at Tesla. SpaceX has signed a deal to launch up to four of Europe's flagship navigation and secure communication satellites into orbit. So that's actually good news for us Tesla stock investors. AJ's doing some good research here. Here's what I mean when I say GM is ridiculously incompetent. GM just started recently shipping the new Chevy Blazer EV. The Chevy is $8,000 more, the range is 51 miles less, it has a lot less horsepower, it's also heavier, a lot heavier actually, the top speed is a bit less but that doesn't really matter, but the cargo, even though the Chevy is really boxy, you would think it would have more cargo space, but no, it doesn't, it has 22% less cargo space. And you can see some other EVs here as well, but this just illustrates how ridiculously incompetent, preposterously incompetent GM is. So I'm not blaming these UAW workers wanting to strike because they know where this company is headed and it's headed for bankruptcy. So in the meantime, we might as well try to get paid. But even if somehow miraculously GM suddenly acquired good leadership with all of these UAW demands, ah, it's just gonna be, it would be so much more difficult. So the future for GM is bleak and the future for Tesla is pretty good, especially if Tesla's employees do not unionize. Even if they did, Tesla would be all right, but it will not be a positive for Tesla. And while some Tesla employees may want to unionize, I think, it will probably fail, at least in the US. I don't think it's going to be a successful campaign. And I would like to thank all my Patreon supporters. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to how much I think it is fair to pay per Tesla share each year between 2023 and 2033. If you sign up for the investor tier of support, you will also get my valuation model of Tesla stock with a 45 minute video walkthrough. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching that discussion about the future with Elon Musk, watch this one first. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.